right, we've now been joined by Chase Briscoe. Chase, thanks for joining us. A little bit of a welcome home for you here in um, the state of Indiana. But I know you've been here most of the week. I think you might have come here straight from Michigan. Yeah. But um, you were at Colts camp, training camp earlier. Um, and then I think you um, also raced SRX maybe yeah. um, on Thursday night. But just tell us a little bit about your week kind of what it's been like to be back at back at home and, and really truly what this place means to you personally. Yeah, it's been super nice just to be home. I feel like this is always my favorite week of the year, just knowing that I get to come home, see my family. So yeah, it drove, kind of switched up on me. Normally it's Indy then Michigan. This year was Michigan then Indy. So came down, uh, did Colts camp, which is super cool. I've, I've always been a big Colts fan just growing up here in the state of Indiana. And then I drove down to Mitchell, hung out with my grandparents and, and my parents for two days. Uh, then ran SRX Thursday night and then went to the Children's Museum yesterday and uh, just hung out with family and friends. Went to Air Church last night with some buddies that, uh, you know, I went to high school with. So it's been honestly nice just to kind of regroup. The season's definitely been a grind and um, just kind of I feel fresh again a little bit in a, in a sense. So uh, looking forward to this weekend. This weekend is super significant to me. I feel like any any race car driver in the field dreams of getting to race at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But, um, you know, when you grow up literally just, you know, 60 miles down the road, um, it, hold, it holds even more significance. So uh, just super excited for this weekend, what this weekend uh, always brings, uh, the amount of fans that come out for this race and, you know, come and support me and friends and family is uh, always just so humbling. So, I always try to uh, put on a show for them and, and feel like I can always find that, you know, extra 5 or 10% every time we come here. So hopefully you can uh, finally put one together. We've been close, just haven't been able to seal the deal. All right. We'll now go to questions to the media for Chase. If you have one, raise your hand. We'll work to get a mic to you, and we'll start with Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. As someone who grew up in Indiana, when you see IndyCar and NASCAR come together here, what is that like for you? And then, all conversely, this weekend is probably going away for all intents and purposes. Um, are you happy with that, or does it make you sad, or how do you feel about that? Yeah, I think, you know, this this weekend and just the crossover is super cool. I mean, uh, for me, at least, growing up in Indiana, you know, I was an IndyCar fan. Um, you know, you just kind of naturally are, I feel like, if you grew up here. So, um, for me, this weekend was always cool just seeing the crossover. You know, I feel like especially prior, really, to this weekend, uh, when we started doing it two or three years ago, there was almost like you were either an IndyCar fan or you are a NASCAR fan. There wasn't a ton of just crossover, where now you see drivers from, you know, both disciplines coming and racing. I feel like the fan base has really kind of embraced each other. Um, and it's just a great opportunity, and honestly, the Saturday ticket is, as I feel like, one of the best in motorsports. You can come and watch an IndyCar race. You can watch an Xfinity race. You can watch the Cup Cars practice and qualify. It's just, a, as a race fan, it's a great opportunity and a great ticket to have. So um, I don't know if it's going to go away. If it does, you know, it's obviously that's that's going to be a great ticket that will go away. Um, I doubt they would run, obviously, the Oval for IndyCar, but maybe they could still run. If we do go back to the Oval, the IndyCars could run on the road course and we could still run the Oval. I don't know how that would work. But, um, yeah, I think today is always cool from a race fan side of things. Just it's getting to see three different disciplines and three of the highest disciplines in, you know, North American motorsports all compete on the same racetrack. Yep. All right. Go ahead. Chase, you haven't had the opportunity to drive on the Oval in the Cup Series. How surreal will that be if we go back to it next year for you, being from Indiana? Yeah, I mean, I always tell everybody that, you know, for me, if you're racing on the Oval, the road course, the dirt track over there, or even in the parking lot in the quarter midget, it's, it's special to get a race here. But I think it's no secret that the prestige and the history that the Oval holds is definitely – you know, above the other disciplines that you could race here. Um, so for me, you know, I've been able to run two oval races in the Xfinity series, and it was just the the wildest feeling, truthfully, coming off a of turn four every lap and seeing that front straightaway. So I'm uh, doing the cup test here Monday, Tuesday, and it's crazy to think that I'll be, you know, one of three guys to, to drive this next-gen car on the oval. So if we get a race on it, you know, the significance of what the Brickyard 400 is, um, you know, it's a crown jewel. Uh, there's no other way to say it. I mean, I think it's the Daytona 500, and then the Brickyard 400 is the second race that, you know, from a driver standpoint, everybody wants to win. So I grew up coming to a lot of Brickyard 400s. If we do come back, it would be super special. And, uh, yeah, just excited to see what this test holds Monday, Tuesday, and, you know, what it could mean for the future. Well, you mentioned your Xfinity runs here. You, you've had success on the road course in Xfinity here. You've showed speed at times on this track and cup. Do you have mixed emotions knowing that this is a place that you can perform? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, 
you know, every time we talk about going to the Oval, I always tell people, like, from a history and significance standpoint, I want to go back. But I do feel like from a winning standpoint, I have a little bit better shot on the on the road course. So, yeah, I mean, for me, I still would much rather run the Oval if I was going to win one or the other for sure. You know, just to – for me in my career, I would love to be able to say I got to run a Brickyard 400. So, the road course, you know, it wouldn't hurt my feelings if we ran twice here, once on the Oval, once on the road course. I don't think that's going to happen. But – um yeah, you know, it is a little bit of mixed feelings. But truthfully, I feel like if everything comes together, we can win on the oval too. But I, I have had success here in the past, like you said, on the road course. So it is easy to – not easy, but you at least come here with confidence. Where on the oval, you know, I don't have a ton of laps compared to a lot of guys. So it is a little bit harder to be – I feel like it's confident coming into those. All right, Kelly, up front here. So along those same lines of you were just talking about oval or road course, Doug Bowles said on Sirius XM yesterday, maybe there's a conversation to be had about running them in alternating years, oval one year, road course the next year, back and forth. So is that something you want to jump on the train to help him have that conversation? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I do think that it's no secret, right? Like the the oval, the Brickyard 400, it started out as you know packed, sold out practically. And towards the end, you know, it wasn't really that. So I think we had to do something to switch it up as a sport to kind of get it back. You know, obviously we lost a crown jewel doing that, but, you know, I, I do think maybe that's a possibility. You know, you run the road course every two or three years in a row, bring the oval back the fourth year or something, because, you know, it, it definitely seemed like when we ran the oval every year, it did lose a little bit. But truthfully, with this next-gen car and how it's raced on the ovals, it might be this incredible race. So, um, I don't know. You know, I wouldn't be against – running the oval the next three, four years. But at the same time, I wouldn't be against, you know, switching back and forth. But I do think it's hard to have a crown jewel on the schedule and then take it away, bring it back, take it away. So I don't know. I think if we're, if we're going to do it, you know, I would love to see it be a mainstay at least for a couple of years. Are you doing the tire test? Yeah. So, so will that be the first, going back to what you were talking about earlier about running on the oval here, will that be the first chance that you really have run on the oval? And even though it's going to be empty, will uh, that mean I, anything? Well, I ran two Xfinity races, um, but I think both of them were actually on Monday. They were both rain, or the one was on Tuesday. So it was practically like a test day. There's nobody here. All right, Lee. Can you take us through your win here? Because... Um, it's not that you were an unknown before that, but after that, you were a winner at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And, and for a guy that grew up not far from here, I know it meant the world to you. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely meant the world. Uh, I mean, I, I was crying in the car after. I mean, it just meant a ton. And, you know, that day, just in general, I felt like, you know, like you said, I wasn't, not that I was unknown, but I don't think people even thought I could be in the Cup Series up to that point. And, Whenever I went and, and beat AJ kind of straight up, I felt like that really changed the conversation really quickly as far as what my next year was going to look like. Um, you know, up until that point, nobody had even talked to me about cup racing or anything. And after that win, it was all of a sudden the starts, the talk st started to happen. So, you know, that day uh, was a super special day. You know, I, I about threw the race away just being so nervous, knowing that I was leading with a couple to go. And, you know, that, that day at the same time is, is such a, a bummer day for me, just knowing that there was absolutely nobody here. It, it burns me up to this day. So I think that's why I, I've put even more pressure on myself to be able to win here again, just because I want to I want to experience that with the fans and with my, my family and my friends. I want to climb the fence and have people going crazy like Tony did, where when I did it, I just looked at the empty grandstands. So, you know, winning here during COVID, Winning here regardless was special, but, you know, winning here in COVID did make it just a little bit of a bummer from a personal standpoint, just with how much it meant to me and everything else and not being able to experience that with anybody else. Yep. Thanks. All right. Any final questions for Chase? All right. We'll go to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports, uh, getting close to entering the final third of the season. Uh, these will be the final races for Kevin Harvick. I know you got many other things on your mind, but the the idea that you're moving closer and closer to no longer having Kevin as a teammate, and you've talked about what he's meant to you. What is this time like for you? Uh, I'm just trying to maximize it. Truthfully, um, you know, seeing a guy that's done it at the level that he's done it, and having him as a resource. You know, I only have 
what is it, 13 more weeks to use him as a resource. So, um, you know, these past two, three weeks, I've been going to the simulator two hours early and watching him and then asking him questions at the end, um, just trying to, to use as much as I can and milk it as much as I can for as long as I can. Um, and truthfully, I haven't done a very good job, I feel like, once I got to the Cup Series of using Kevin. Um, you know, in the Xfinity Series, I felt like I used him a lot. And then when I got to the Cup Series, I just didn't really use him anymore for whatever reason. And these last couple of weeks, especially with how much I've been struggling here lately, I've been trying to – to get back to using him and just asking him more questions. And um, I wish I would have done it a lot more these past couple of years, just especially now as I've done it these past couple of weeks and just seeing how smart he is and just how he approaches the weekends. Um, there's a reason he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And, and for me not to, to use him week in and week out like I, I had these last couple of weeks was kind of ignorant on my part, truthfully. So I'm um, kind of kicking myself for not doing that, but definitely going to try to – um, use him these last 13 weeks to the best of my ability. All right, I had one more All right, in the back. Go ahead. Just to kind of to follow up on that being towards the end of the season, you have three weeks until the playoffs start. Daytona, Watkins Glen, Indianapolis. Daytona's more of a, a Hail Mary for a lot of the drivers that, that can't point their way in if they're trying to make the playoffs. For you, is the aggression level over these next three, are they any different in each one or compared to maybe Daytona, or is it just the same amount of aggression trying to get a win at each track? Um, you know, truthfully, I feel like if I'm in position, I'm definitely going to be aggressive, just knowing, you know, that's going to be probably our only opportunity, you know, especially if it happens just once in these next three weeks. The, the odds of it happening again might not be there, so <clears throat> I'll be pretty aggressive. But truthfully, we just haven't had the – the speed in the cars lately to even be aggressive, whether it's on pit calls or on the racetrack or anything. So I do think that, you know, this weekend's probably my best opportunity to be up in the mix. You know, Daytona is kind of what it is. But, you know, Watkins Glen, it's hard to say. I've not been great there unless it rains. So, um, you know, hopefully if I'm up in the mix, I'll definitely be aggressive just knowing. Um, so, yeah, I feel like the aggressive level's been there all year. I just haven't really had – the opportunity to show it. Um, so hopefully this weekend I'll be able to show that. Yep, thanks. All right. Any final questions for Chase? All right. Thank you for spending yeah, time with us. Best of luck this weekend.